I realized I've never shown you the inside of my wedding photography kit and it's about time that I do so, especially since it's the start of 2019 and these what's in my camera bag videos are going around everywhere and I love watching those videos, but figured it's time to show you what's in my wedding photography bag. So let's roll the intro and jump right in. All right, welcome back. My name is Josiah Blizzard, in case you don't know me. I'm a wedding photographer and filmmaker based in the Philadelphia region, and I am gonna show you what's inside my entire wedding photography kit, at least just this roller bag, starting with the bag. This is the Manfrotto PLLW88W roller bag. It's the most ridiculous name for a roller bag. This thing is humongous. I carry everything in here, it even has a slot for your light stands and your flash stands. This, those fit in the bag, tripods fit in this bag. It is massive. I don't have to bring any other bag with me really for, for gear other than this bag. In 2019, we're using the Sony A7III's. Let's see if it focuses. There it is, the Sony A7III's. We have two of these. The other one is on the camera that is recording this video. These things have so much functionality for the price point, they're $2,000 and you have amazing, amazing autofocus. I autofocus, I can track, like, like I don't even, I'm gonna do a whole nother video on this because I switched from Canon to Sony because of the functionalities that these cameras have. These things are monsters. We use two of these on the wedding day and we bring a Canon 6D for backup. This is our backup camera. We never go anywhere without a backup camera in case something happens. You cannot rely on technology anymore, so always have a backup camera with you in case your main camera kind of craps out. So we're using the Canon as a backup, and you're probably wondering, well, how the heck are you doing that with lenses? Well, we're mainly shooting on Canon lenses, so the lenses we're using this year, the big guy, love this thing. Makes me feel so legit when I'm using it. I always used to want to have one of these, and I finally do. This is the uh, 70 to 200 from Canon. It is a 2.8 f-stop and it is the series 2. This thing is super sharp and we actually have a little bit of issue when attaching this to the Sony because we're using Sigma MC11 adapters to attach our Canon lenses onto the Sony bodies. These things are around 250 bucks. They're cheaper than the Metabone Speed Booster and they work just as well. The autofocus is pretty much uh, pretty much how it would be on a Sony native lens. Um, the only lens that we have issue with is the 70 to 200. Uh, the autofocus is a little wonky, especially in low light, but it still does the job fairly well. The other lenses that we're using is the 24 to 70 2.8 version two. This thing is a monster as well, um, pretty much on the cameras for the beginning of the wedding day all the way to the reception. It's on the camera pretty much at all times. Also using the 100 macro 2.8. Uh, this is pretty much for ring shots. Let's see if it focuses. Uh, there we go. This is pretty much for ring shots and details and then some telephoto stuff during the ceremony. 2.8 version two. And then we have the Canon 51.4. This is probably gonna get replaced this year um, and updated to a Sigma 50 1.4 art lens. Um, this guy has just kind of become a little bit soft. I still think this is the best lens you can get for the price. It's about 300, 350 bucks on Amazon, 1.4. I need to upgrade to the 50 1.4 art. Uh, this guy does the job that we've had this for years and it's, it is a bargain. So if you're looking for a lens under 400 bucks and you want it to be fast and good in low light, the 50 1.4 is the lens for you. As far as Sony lenses, uh, the main one I'm using is the 85 1.8 from Sony. This is a Sony native lens. Uh, super crisp, uh, really sharp, great color. Uh, love this lens. Um, it's super lightweight too, and I love that. Uh, so that's from Sony, that's what we're using for portraits mainly. And then for video, we will sometimes use the A6500. Uh, this is a crop sensor camera, it's not a full frame like the, the A7 three. Uh, so we'll shoot with this guy for video uh, at uh, 1080 at 60 frames per second. Uh, and it'll have the 18 to 105 f4 uh, lens on that camera. Actually, when it's on the a6500, it'll actually turn into something more like a 28 to 153. So you get a little extra zoom too, which is kind of nice. Uh, but it is an F4, I wish it was an F2. I'm just not willing to pay the money for it yet. So that's what we're using as far as cameras and gear goes. I always bring some little knickknacks with me as well. 
little blow air blower. Uh, we use mirrorless cameras if dust gets on the sensor because nothing's blocking the sensor. If dust gets on there, we can kind of blow that dust away. You can see, <laughs> fun to use and scare the dog with. He hates this thing, it's so funny. Memory card wallets, very important. Always have backup memory cards with you. We carry two of these with us on the wedding day, all filled with 64 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte SD cards. I only buy SD cards from SanDisk. Um, I trust them the most for some reason. That's what I've always bought. So flashes, we're using the Yongnuo 563 speed lights. Um, these are about 70 bucks. I don't like buying expensive flashes because my flash stands get knocked over uh, probably once or twice a year. Uh, actually, the last wedding we shot in November, boom, flash stand went down, broke the, broke the flash, and that's it. Thankfully, these are only 70 bucks, and they can be replaced fairly simply uh, and cheaply. And they work, I mean, they work just as well as any Canon or whatever speed light you're using. Uh, obviously, they take AA batteries, they take four of them, so they eat power real fast, but they work pretty well. So. This is kind of what we've opted to use, the uh, Yongnuo 563s or 564s, whatever is the newest version at that, that moment in time. So those are, those are our flashes. Uh, all of our flashes are always modified with MagMod modifiers. It's short for Magnet Mod. And you can see uh, it attaches via magnet. It doesn't fall off. This is the MagSphere. It just diffuses the light in all directions pretty much. It makes for great soft lighted portraits and great for receptions and getting ready, throw this on a stand with the flash on a stand and uh, you got light that fills the room. Uh, so that's what we use, uh, MagMod. There's a whole bunch of different modifiers in there as well. And I'll actually, let me break that out. Um, in my bag, I have this clear bag a bag within a bag. And this holds all of my flash stuff just because we have so much crap floating around the bag and I didn't want it floating anymore. Now it's in a secure location. If I open this up, more MagMod stuff. You have two grids which control light, okay? You have a gel holder and a bunch of gels, a whole gel kit actually, we can open that up. And you can see all of the different colors of gel. Oh, I bumped the mic, oh no. You can see all the different colored gels in here and there's a whole bunch kind of sitting behind here as well. Like this is actually a diffusion card. So whole bunch of stuff in here along with some patterned gobos at the bottom. We're using some transceivers to s communicate the flashes to the camera. Um, we use the Cactus V5s or V6s or something like that. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love them. I don't really, really like them. Mainly because I, I actually haven't found any triggers that I that I like at all. Uh, but these are fairly reasonably priced. And they don't cost like what a pocket wizard would cost, you know, but they do the trick, they do the job. Uh, they do sometimes fall off your camera if uh, you have too much weight on the top of the camera. So make sure that they really lock down. I've heard that these things actually will break on you if you push them too hard. But, uh, so I'm not gonna recommend these at all, but I'm not gonna not recommend them. They're actually fairly solid. Uh, they've lasted me a while and they're they're fairly reasonably priced, like I said. So we're using a bunch of those, um, pretty much one on each camera and then one on each flash that we have. And that's that's just how, just, just how it goes. I also bring this LED light with me, uh, just in case it gets too dark. There's so many times we're at the reception and they turn off all the lights and I can't find anybody to turn them back on and I can't focus and I can't see. If that's the case, I say screw it and we're throwing up a light and I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna be able to see what I'm shooting. So this comes in handy and this actually I will mount either to a stand or to a friction arm. I love these things, man. They're super cheap, they run like 15, 20 bucks and you can clamp these to pretty much anything that has you know, a width that is not beyond that. So you clamp this guy down, has the you know, rotating mechanism. This guy here locks it in place so it can't rotate anymore. And it has a quarter inch uh, thread. So you can, attach this to, you can attach this to a camera, you can attach it to the bottom of our flash triggers. And we've at, at so many points in our career have attached this to railings or ledges, anything that this fits on and we'll point the flashes at it and keep it off, keep the flashes off the ground, especially in locations where there's high traffic areas and no place for us to put our stands without people bumping into them, knocking them over and breaking our gear. Uh, an Expo disc, 
I did a little video on an Expo disc a while back. Uh, the link is right here, it's above somewhere. Go watch that video, this will change your life, especially if you're a beginner shooter. This is one of the best pieces of equipment that you can buy for $50 or less. Love this thing. It's a white balance filter, that's what that is. Something else we keep in the bag is these clamps. These things are super clutch. What we'll use these for is photographing the, uh, the dress, the wedding dress. We clamp it onto the, you know, we pinch the dress, clamp it onto the dress. Looks ridiculous, but you can see it tightened up the, <laughs> I gotta hit the gym. But you can see it brings the, uh, the clothing material in, making it tighter. And I don't know if you've ever shot the dress and the dress looks like fat and wide, and you're like, why does this not look good? Well, it's because it's just a piece of fabric that's sitting there. It needs to be almost formed to what it's gonna look like when it's wrapped around a body. You know, we bring in the waist, make it look thinner, and the dress ultimately looks more flattering. Just tuck it to the back gently, and fold it down, hang it, you know, behind a door or something, and that's, and that's pretty much it. We'll also bring a computer, an iPad, uh, appropriate chargers, USBs, and we'll do a wedding day uh, slideshow for the, uh, the couple if we get the time. Pretty much select 30 to 40 images, upload that to the computer, do a quick edit, export over to the iPad and hand it to the couple, and then leave it out for guests and, uh, and other people to kind of take a look at. And that's been really great. But that's really about it for what's in my camera bag. We do shoot video as well, which I've talked about. That's a whole nother video I'm gonna do about how I shoot both photo and video at a wedding at the same time. So be on the lookout for that. But guys, what is in your camera bag? I would love to know what you guys are using this year in 2019. Let me know what you're, what you're using. What's in your kit this year? What are you excited about? Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that like button if you enjoyed this content and maybe share with a friend who might find this helpful. I will catch you guys in the next video.